So earlier today, I was just going through Twitter, going through my notifications and my feed and stuff, and then I ran across this where it said, Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson each top 250 rushing yards through three games. And I was like, hold up, is that combined? Like, that can't be each, right? But then I thought about it, I was like, hold up. Lamar, he went crazy in that week one game against the Chiefs, and then... Both of them kind of went crazy, especially Derrick Henry in that game against the Cowboys. I know against the, the Raiders, Lamar kind of slowed it down a bit. So I was like, hold up, that actually might be real. And Then I looked at the article, and this is from Pro Football Talk, by the way. It said only eight NFL players have 250 rushing yards this season. Two of them are teammates in Baltimore, Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson. I said, what? Really? Like, Derrick Henry, okay, cool, whatever. But Lamar, I know Lamar was up there, too, as far as rushing yards. I know a big expectation coming into this season was that with Derrick Henry coming through and him expecting to be the lead back, because Baltimore Ravens haven't had a true lead back in a long time, probably ever since Mark Ingram in 2019. But with Derrick Henry expecting to be the lead back, then he was going to alleviate a lot of the rushes off of Lamar Jackson. And I think he still will, but at the same time, I, I don't look at this number like it's a problem. And I know a lot of people will, and that's okay. But the way that I look at it, like Lamar Jackson said, whatever it takes to win games, he is willing to do it. And that's what I think the Baltimore Ravens should, whatever it takes to win, whatever it takes in whatever situation, if it's the passing game, it's the, if it's the running game, whatever it might be, however you find a way to get yards and then turn those yards into points, you do it. You do it. It ain't got to be pretty. It ain't got to be orthodox. It ain't got to be traditional as long as you are winning. And we know the Boston Ravens, they could use a lot more winning because they've been losing more than they've been winning. But they got a big opportunity uh, tomorrow night to switch up what they got in the win column. Now, another crazy number, crazy statistic on these Baltimore Ravens. It said through three weeks, through the first three weeks, the Baltimore Ravens have allowed just three sacks, making them the third least sack team in the league now this is why we always talk about when you look at numbers when you look at stats and statistics and all that it's not black and white it's really not because you can look at oh my god ravens only gave up three sacks why are these people complaining about their offensive line why are these ravens fans saying their offensive line needs more work they need help they need to be better why because you look at that, three sacks, that ain't nothing. And I think two of them came from Max Crosby and one from Chris Jones. So some of the, the, best, the best defensive linemen in the league are the ones that ended up getting to Lamar Jackson. But you, you can't just look at that number without – this is why you actually got to watch the games. Because I know that there are a lot of people, there are a lot of like uh, commentators and stuff and analysts and stuff and experts and professionals and whatnot – They'll, they'll go on, whether ESPN, FS, or whatever the network might be, and they'll, they'll, they'll look at they'll bring up something like that and be like, hey, what these Ravens fans doing complaining about the offensive line? And we'll be like, no, but are you, do you not see the games? Do you not see that Lamar Jackson is always under duress? And I can guarantee you, I know you can guarantee me too, had the Baltimore Ravens had a different quarterback under center, that number would be a lot more, a whole lot more. Now, an another number that is a whole lot more. Uh, in yesterday's video, we talked about um, the article from SI Sports Illustrated dot com that linked DeAndre Hopkins to the Baltimore Ravens. And I, of course, did say, like, look, if they were to add DeAndre Hopkins, it would be for a super low draft pick or whatever. And, and that would help upgrade the Baltimore Ravens wide receiver room. But I looked in that comment section. A lot of people were like, ah. DeAndre Hopkins. No, we don't want no washed up DeAndre Hopkins. We need somebody fresh, somebody younger, somebody better. Now, I know I love DeAndre Hopkins, but my preference would be DK Metcalf. But I know that ain't happening. You see what the Seahawks doing over there? You think Mike McDonald's gonna give it? No, Mike McDonald's over there winning. DK Metcalf ain't going nowhere. But somebody in the comment section they brought up another possible option. That being Cortland Sutton. So I said, oh, that's one to think about right there. And now some news for this upcoming game we got against the Bills. Uh, this is from Jeff Zriebeck. He said, Ravens have downgraded nose tackle Michael Pierce uh, with a shoulder injury to doubtful for tomorrow's game against the Bills. And that's not good. But let's keep reading. He said, Pierce hasn't been playing a ton of snaps, but he's a valuable piece on the defensive line rotation. And yeah, that's true. He is. Michael Pierce, uh, over the years, he has been really good. Uh, for the Baltimore Ravens He does not make a lot of the sexy plays But he's a defensive lineman So he's not expected to But Michael Pierce He, he can play some ball But um, like Jeff Zrebic said He has not been playing a ton of snaps But we've been seeing Obviously Matt Abike, That's our guy But Travis Jones Travis Jones has been 
amazing this year. Like, so many times when you see a play being made by the defensive line, you'll, of course, see 92, but you'll see number 98 right there making a play as well. So while Michael Pierce probably is not going to play, if he's doubtful, he's most likely not going to play. We'll see. But Travis Jones, he could certainly hold it down. But with him, well, Michael Pierce being out, that does hurt the depth of the Baltimore Ravens. It does hurt, like Jeff Zrebeck said, the rotation of the Baltimore Ravens with the offensive line. But they should still be in some good shape. So team, keep it clean. Let's get to my favorite part of these videos where we feature your questions. If you'd like to be part of it, you can send me an email at teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Or if you're a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can send one directly on Patreon. Let's get into it. First one came from my guy, Kenny from Bmore, who is a Team Keep It Clean patron. Appreciate you. He said, Angry in this game against the Bills, we need to be a run first heavy team. I'm hearing that their defense is not so great against the run. I haven't seen it for myself, but however you think we could do damage. Hey, if that's the case, do it. Do it. Get Derrick Henry going early and often and continue it. Do not stop the process. Find ways to get him going. I like how they started doing the pitch plays, doing the toss plays to Derrick Henry. So he got the ball in his hands and he can really get that acceleration going. Um, so they need to do what they can. Bills are a very physical team. So Ravens need to do what they can in order to out physical the Buffalo Bills. But continuing, he also said, uh, now, if we get a DeAndre Hopkins, I think I smell a Super Bowl. Even though he's not the Hopkins of old, I still think it will be a wonderful fit for all Baltimore Ravens. I mean, hey, he's he 32. So, yeah, he will fit perfectly. He said, anyway, wish you all the success in the world. Love the channel. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, the channel has got me through a lot uh, of a lot through the years. Uh, really uplift me sometimes when I was down uh, going through certain things. But I really appreciate you. And the fam, I hope the fam is good and love y'all, and I'm out. Man, Kenny, I, I appreciate this a lot. I, 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 I really do. Seriously, man. I appreciate that a lot. Um, earlier today, um, I was out doing some stuff. Had a, I had a lot on my mind, just thinking about some different things, some different situations, uh, just in life and why, why this didn't happen or why this did happen the way that it did. And, and a lot of times I just get to thinking and whatnot. And um, and there's uh, some situations where I just wish they were different. Um, I, I wish they were better. Now everything with me and my family, we, we good, but it's, it's some some other stuff. But um, so I, I appreciate this. I appreciate you sharing this, though. I, I appreciate um, the fact that the channel could help you out. Cause while I know there will be people that say the channel helps them out, y'all help me out a lot. Y'all really do with your positive comments, with just the the support, with just. Everything that y'all do, and again, this is every single day. Every single day y'all be coming through. Of course, 99% of people showing support, showing love, giving their input on whatever the case is. Then you got, you got 1% of people that, that'll come through hating or whatever. And that, that is, it's life. It, it ain't no big deal. Um, but I, I appreciate those of y'all that just that show genuine love, man, because it, it goes a long way with me for real, man. Next question came from my guy, TJ. He said they would get DeAndre Hopkins. He said they would get DeAndre Hopkins when he was 32 years old, same old Ravens, and then calling him a superstar at this stage of his career, shaking my head. Now, that wasn't the Ravens that called him that. That was that article. And like we, we said in that video yesterday, DeAndre Hopkins, he's he not a superstar anymore. But anyway, uh, he said, why not DK Metcalf? Well, I told you about that. Well, DK Metcalf, he's on the Seahawks. They 3-0. and Like, if they sitting at 3-0, and why would they trade their receiver? They ain't trading their receiver. He said, uh, JJ. Now, you know Justin. Now, you know. Now, you know Justin. <laughs> you know Justin. Justin wasn't never, ever going nowhere. Uh, he said, um, all these young wide receivers except Devontae Adams. He a little older, but DK, Justin Jefferson, T. Higgins. With T. Higgins, they, Bengals ain't trading him to us. Now, Ravens can sign him in offseason when Bengals don't re-sign him and don't franchise tag him again, but Ra Bengals ain't trading no T. Higgins to, to the Ravens. Unless the Ravens gave up like a crazy if – if the Bengals literally stole from the Ravens, they got like multiple first-round picks, second-round picks, that would be the only way if like the Ravens gave over a, ra a king's ransom for T. Higgins. But they obviously ain't doing that, so that ain't happening. Anyway, he said Debo Samuel. That's one that I could see happening, depending on how 49ers season goes, especially with them signing Brandon Ayuk. Debo not going to be the future over there. But then Debo, I, I feel like he will be such a great Raven, man. But the only thing I'd be scared about is he always hurt, man. Debo Samuel, is he's an amazing player. He can do so many different things. And he would fit in with the Ravens so perfect. But he just be hurt all the time, all the time, man. That would be the only thing I'd be scared about. He said they go after D-Hop two years after Lamar asked for him. He said, OMG. <laughs> he said, God bless the family, the channel, and all Ravens. Sorry for the Ravens wide receiver ran. You ain't got to apologize, my friend. Um, but I always appreciate TJ because he will go off. He'll, he'll go off on the Ravens. Hey, this needs to be better. That needs to be better. What are you doing this? Da -da -da -da. But he'll always end on such a positive note every time.
Next question came from my guy Mark JG. He said, The perfect chameleon. What's up, Engraven? Hope this week has been treating you and the family good. I, I, I appreciate that. Uh, he said, I kind of hope this blackout game would have been earlier because I started my new job a couple weeks ago and I got to get up at 5 30 a.m., but it's prime time. Hey, well, shout out to you for congratulations on your new job. And that's great that you do have a job to go to. So that, that's an amazing thing. So shout out to you big time. He said, um, the game is prime time. And speaking of prime time, we can say Mr. Eraser, Lamar Jackson is prime time too, right? So this leads me into my point in question. Without counting accolades, Lamar really could be the best quarterback out there. He could be the perfect chameleon. And let me explain. All right, let's see where he's going with this. Lamar is by far the best dual threat quarterback out there. Now it's not even close. Yeah, that's true. Mahomes is awesome, but he only runs when he has to. And there's nothing wrong with it. And Lamar wishes to do the same right this Dallas game really made me emphasize uh, on the details of Lamar's capabilities this man can really be dominant in a run heavy, run heavy game and still pass I always looked at his stats like okay it's 182 passing and 87 rushing as an example it doesn't blow you away until you start combining the accounted yardage and and his damage that's 269 yards by himself uh, we've also seen Lamar sling it for like three or four hundred yards uh, like in 2019 I think he had a 250 passing and 150 rushing in the same game and even in the Titans playoff game yeah in the Titans playoff game I think he like had like 500 something yards passing and running together and it, like I I didn't appreciate it as much as I should have back then like and then look look and I would always hear like oh yeah Lamar had like 500 yards by I would always hear but I, I didn't really appreciate it until like this year like whoa that that's a lot anyway uh he said I say all this to say that he can blend into any offense well and still be accounted for in a big way towards a contribution. If this sounds so obvious, why are we having issues with the offense and not finishing games? There's no reason to be so conservative, and I get defenses adjust and change, but Lamar can fit in multiple environments that don't limit him. No other QB can switch gears like that and still do his thing. I don't know about you, a team keep it clean. I was always confident in Lamar, but these last two years, it's a whole new confidence I have in him because you can see him take the bull by the horns. The only thing I say is I think he still overthinks on deep shots like – I don't think it's accuracy. I feel it's more of how much do I want to put uh, into these, the past. Should I put more or less? Perfect example is a KC game where he overthrew Isaiah and underthrew Zay. I don't know if this is sad or scary, but we haven't seen Lamar's final form. I agree with that wholeheartedly. I, I do not think we've seen Lamar, the, the, the best version of Lamar that we could possibly see yet. I really don't. I think it's for a, a number of different reasons. It's, it's part of, partly the scheme, but it's also the personnel. It's how the Baltimore Ravens operate. Now, again, I'm, Ravens have gotten so much good out of Lamar Jackson. Again, two MVPs. Like, you, you can't get bad out of somebody and they get two MVPs. Uh, but I feel like they, they could have got, they could get so much more. So much. But anyway, continuing. He said, also, I'm liking Zach Orr. It's just going to take time. I'm not too concerned because you see two defenses in the game. You see a dominant defense and you see a Swiss cheese. <laughs> We can obviously play and are good. It's literally adjusting. I agree. I agree a million percent. Uh, he said, I didn't see your wide receiver rumor video yet, uh, but it looks like it's DeAndre Hopkins. We got two route runners at wide receiver. Do you think a tall speedster who's a big target would help? We got Tez. I know, but I'm drafting rookies to start or at least contribute. Five rookies have made a good impression and impact since being drafted, and two were undrafted. Uh, Wiggins, Rogers, Sanusi, Kane, Bo Bray, Dayton Wade. Since Hobbs like moving pieces, maybe uh, – Maybe maybe Sensei. Who who can try guard? I don't know what that was supposed to be. Um, I'm trying to figure it out, but I wonder if that was supposed to be Samak. But anyway, uh, he said, Engraven, thanks for all you do. Hopefully this finds you and we get a win against the Buffalo Bills. I, I hope so, but I, I appreciate you. And I appreciate you, man. Um, because my guy Mark JG, a lot of times I would get his, his, his last name mixed up and be thinking GJ. But um, I appreciate you because you've been – supporting for years you really have um and it means a lot man it, it really does um i i just uh y'all are great man team keep it clean y'all y'all are really really special man like i'm for real man and i, I know this been a kind of different video um but yeah like i said i've just been having a lot on my mind and um i, I really really appreciate y'all a lot a whole lot like so much so mark thank you very very much man he said i like the merch i'm gonna have to grab some now stay blessed no matter what challenges anyone faces y'all got this like ben cleveland was after that touchdown i'm out mm. it's crazy man um timing T timing is crazy because like i said it, it, i didn't had a lot on my mind recently and for him to end his question with that it's like it's literally perfect timing man 
Mark Andrews, unpopular opinion. Next question came from my guy Noah. He said, "What's good? Hope your family is healthy and happy. Love the videos. K kept me sane during the early part of the season. Yeah, because the Ravens, boy, they they try to make us go insane. Anyway, he said, uh, "What do you think about the Ravens trading Mark Andrews to a team like the Rams? They need a tight end, and Mark is on a seven mil a year contract. He has a sixteen point nine mil cap hit uh, expiring after next year. Isaiah likely needs more snaps, and he looks like a tight end one, especially after seeing the extra reps last year and in week one this season." I think likely is the future and better suited to take advantage of the receiver friendly route rules and flags. Mark is 29 right now, and I think it could be a win win for both teams as the Rams pass the ball more and Mark can be involved in their offense versus uh, having to block more in the Ravens offensive game plan. If that even is the game plan. <laughs> I like that. The Ravens have uh, Cola and Ricard, who are great blockers and can pick up any reps if needed. The Ravens can probably package Ben Cleveland if he is not in the plans. You mean, yeah, they could package Ben Cleveland. Can you, yeah, well, we'll see tomorrow. Uh, might as well let him go to another team so he can actually play rather than him rather than not play and uh, lose him for nothing to free agency next year. The, oof, he said the best time to sell is when you don't think you need to. Oh, wow, that's that's something right there. Um. Wow, you got me with that last part. The best time to sell is when you don't think you need to. Cause I would say, y'all know, I would, I'd say keep Mark Andrews all day, every day, like this year, next next year after this season. Oh, have the conversation. But if they were to do it now, oh, that that would be something. And yeah, like Isaiah likely he can obviously handle being a tight end one. Um, and like I said, I think he still should be tight end one. Um, then Charlie Kohler, he can block too. He can catch as well. He can move a little bit now. He ain't no Isaiah Likely. Well, ain't nobody know Isaiah Likely, but Charlie Kohler, um, he could do his thing too. And all, the only thing that's been holding him back has really been opportunity. Like, that's it. Like, he can't get no opportunity. It's, it's Mark Andrews, it's Isaiah Likely, and then everybody else on off. Like, Charlie Kohler can't really get no real consistent opportunity like that. But um, if Mark Andrews, if they were to trade him, whoa, that too, to the Rams too. That would be something. Um, so you'd say just trade him for draft picks because you ain't, you ain't list any players to receive in return. So it sounds like you're just talking about trading him for draft picks. It's really like moving on. Um, that would be something. But I, I, think, I, I really do think it's something that the Ravens uh, have been thinking because they, they always like to do things ahead of time. They like to plan ahead and whatnot. They like to try to get ahead of the game in certain areas of football. Some ways they're a little behind, but there's some ways where they try to get ahead and, and as prepared as as prepared as they possibly can. But I, I um I don't know. I, I just don't see them trading Mark Andrews during this season. I I I don't see it. Anything's of course possible, but I just don't see it happening. Next question came from my guy Jarvo. He said, "Watching your video, and I would love a DeAndre Hopkins or any receiver that opposing teams have to game plan for and respect." Ryan Clark said on Get Up that the Ravens do not have a receiver that teams are afraid of or have to focus on, and I agree with him. But give us a D Hop or a top receiver, and that'll open up this offense so much more. And, and yeah, it would. And, and a lot would depend on who the receiver is, but how the Baltimore, excuse me, how the Baltimore Ravens use him. That, that would mean just as much as the receiver. And, hey, like, right now we don't have a DeAndre Hopkins, which is fine. But let's, let's try to uh, really make defenders fear our receivers who we do have. And that's about the Baltimore Ravens just using them in different ways. Now, obviously, with Zay Flowers, they use him a million different ways. With Rashad Bateman, we're still, we're still waiting. Hey, tomorrow night will be a nice little breakout game. You want to you wanna go for, like, seven catches, 120 yards, two touchdowns? No problem, Rashad. No problem, Lamar. No problem, Monkin. No problem. If you want to, go go for it. But it would be really nice to just see him become established. Because, again, the, the, it's there. Just get it out of him. Do everything you can. Like, I, I would really like to see – and I know they've tried here and there, and uh, there have been some tough moments and whatnot, especially that the, the one against the Raiders, the drop that turned into an interception. But um, I would really love to see them, like, really try with Rashad Bateman – to where they um I, they would I, I want them to get to the point where it's like all right they we we did everything we possibly could to get everything out of them and if it works out great if it doesn't okay cool but at least you tried he also said I'll be watching the media brag about Josh Allen this year on how he's doing all of this with no weapons but yet Lamar has been doing that his whole career yeah even, even my daughter agree you heard her she said yeah anyway uh he said i'm starting to realize that lamar will never get a pass like joe burrow or the quarterbacks if he plays bad or doesn't have weapons around him i hope lamar beats the brakes off the bills but i'm sure the media will have an excuse for josh losing that game as well you thousand percent right you're right everything you said is, is, is spot on lamar does not get critiqued or judged or analyzed or criticized the same way a lot of other different quarterbacks do 
And that's just something as Ravens fans and something as Lamar Jackson that we just all used to.